Take a few deep, long in and out breaths. And think of the breath energy filling the body. When we talk of the breath energy being full, it's not a matter of having your lungs stuffed with air. It's more that the energy channels throughout the body are open, and they feel saturated with comfortable energy. So try to notice where in the body you have that sense of fullness right now, and protect that spot. As you breathe in, protect it as you breathe out. In other words, don't squeeze it, don't pull it. Think of it floating right there. Notice for any spots that don't seem to have a sense of fullness, allow it to, to develop. Some people feel it most easily in their hands, other people feel it most easily in the chest. It really varies from person to person where you're going to feel it first. But once you notice that there's an area that does feel relatively full of nice energy, think of it spreading out from that spot. This is something you can't. This is something you can't push or pull. You have to allow it to spread at its own rate. And tell yourself you're in no hurry. You don't have to anticipate how soon it's going to happen. How long it's going to take. It's something that happens right on the cusp of the present moment. So if you're leaning too much into the future, you're not going to see it. If you're leaning back into the past, you're not going to see it. Try to think of yourself being balanced right here. The image the Buddha gives is of a mustard seed on the tip of an awl. A W L. Like an extremely sharp nail. Now, to develop the sense of fullness, a sense of well being, requires that you pay very careful attention to the breath and you be very meticulous in how you evaluate the breath. How is it feeling right now? When you breathe in, does the breath energy spread smoothly, or does it feel like you're pushing or pulling it too much? What we're working on here is something that's called bitti in Pali. You can translate it as a rapture, you can translate it as fullness, you can translate it as refreshment. The idea is it feels really good, really nourishing. The Buddha talks about it as one of the energizing factors of awakening. And it's also kind of food. There's a passage where he says that we feed on rapture like the radiant gods. And the problem with the word rapture is sometimes it seems too intense for the way some people are experiencing it. Some people feel it as a tingling through the body, their hair standing on end. For others, it's gentler, just a sense of really balanced, full well-being. Some people feel it in waves coming over the body. And some people it's so intense that the body starts moving. And the intensity is not a measure of the intensity of your concentration. It's more a measure of how starved the body has been feeling. If it's been feeling really starved, it's going to be extremely intense. So regardless of how you experience it, sometimes you may want it to be intense, but it's not going to be intense. That doesn't matter. Be very patient with it. Again, if you start pushing it too much, it withers up. Have a strong sense of allowing the energy to be there. And if it's going to spread, it's going to spread at its own rate. 
you just try to maintain your balance. Right there on the cusp of the present. And it'll do its own thing. This is a really important part of the meditation. And John Fuang used to say that's it's like your mind is like a machine. And it needs lubricant, otherwise it's gonna dry up. Your practice gets dry if there's no sense of real refreshment and well-being. He talked about one time being alone up in the forest in northern Thailand. And what kept him going through the day was his ability to tap into this when he needed it. To realize that it's waiting there for you in the present moment. Just look really carefully and give it some space. In the beginning it may not seem like much, but you've got to give it a chance. It's like that old fable of the mouse and the lion. And the lion catches the mouse and then lets it go, and the mouse says, well, maybe someday I'll return the favor. And the lion laughs. And then a while later the lion is caught in a net, and the mouse comes and eats away at the net and frees the lion. So. Don't disparage little things. Don't disparage weak things, because they can grow. They can get stronger. To wherever in the body there's a feeling of, it feels okay. Allow it to stay okay. The word that John Fuhrman would use is brakong, which means to hover around something to protect it and try to develop that same attitude of hovering around these sensations in the body. Don't push them or squeeze them too much. Give them their space. Just protect them so that nothing comes in and steps on them. Ask yes, for any questions the mind may have about how long this is going to take or how much longer we're going to be sitting here, just drop them, drop them, drop them, let them fall away. Try to find a sense of balance right here. Because right here is where all the good things happen, where all the important things happen as well. Because if you have this sense of fullness, then you begin to notice the movements of the mind. And you see where the mind is hungry, and how it often goes out to look for basically junk food, to assuage its hunger. But you realize you don't have to do that. You've got something really nice like right here. Why go out and look for trouble? Greed, aversion, and delusion are like strong cases of hunger. And then never really satisfied. When you act on these things, there may be a little bit of fullness and a little bit of energy that comes, but then it goes. It's like food that's bad for your health. And here's something that you've been carrying around with you all the time, the potentials in the body. And John Lee talks about this a lot, that the body has all kinds of potentials that we rarely take advantage of because we don't let the mind get quiet enough to allow them to show themselves. So give this potential, a potential for fullness, a sense of refreshment, give it some space, give it some time. And you find that it really can strengthen your practice and give you a source of energy that you can tap into when you need it throughout the day, whether you're in formal meditation or not. These potentials are always there. When you can recognize them and know how to allow them to grow.
you've got a constant source of food, a constant source of energy that you can take wherever you go. <laughs>